This is Frank Goss with SGTV. Outdoors or in studio, the sketch was the first effort of American Impressionists of the late 1900s. The artist would lay out a scene, make decisions about scale, composition, narration. It is not a photograph. It is the artist at work, and much is evident about the artist. Dexterity, acuity, perception, control, and artistic skill. Colin Campbell Cooper traveled throughout his professional life. His luggage always contained painting materials, canvas, oils, brushes, but he also carried pads, pencils, crayons, and watercolors. Cooper was a serious artist. Day by day, he recorded his images in sketchbooks, sometimes in pencil, sometimes in pen, constantly studying his own recordation. When an image worked well, he would take out a new sheet and move from pencil to pen, whether in the Colorado foothills or the waterways of Holland. He spent his lifetime training his eye and hand. If the intermediate sketch was successful, it would have gone to become watercolor and perhaps eventually a canvas. Although Cooper's preference was architecture, he was equally capable when he set his hand to figurative work. In this ink sketch, he prepares a fashion illustration, a tight-waisted, fully coiffed vision of what the rest of America referred to as a Gibson girl after the work of Charles Dana Gibson. The academic process of Grisaille, painting in the gray areas between black and white, was not lost to his dedication. Often used as underpaint or as preparatory sketch, this light-dark technique helped create depth and volume, sometimes called chiaroscuro. Though perhaps a sketch, Cooper thought of it as a finished work and signed and dated it. When he chose to use color, he sometimes continued to draft rather than employ a brush, as can be seen in this sketch skyline of New York, where he blocks out his composition and generalizes his color. In this radiant church interior, Cooper employed watercolor and gouache. Here he uses all of his preparatory field skills, pencil drafting, pen finished lines, watercolors, pastel crayons, light versus dark for depth, and of course watercolor. We can feel the rapid hand making its record of interior before the light changes in this church. Though signed by the artist, it is clear that this work is a work in progress on its way to a more finished canvas. The final two images on paper represent Cooper at his finest. The romance of the Middle East was not lost on him. The same confident, rapid stroke is apparent in this watercolor of a village. His sense of color is bold, nearly electric. The buildings are rendered with a sure hand, working without revision. His comfort in expressing architecture is evident. It's no wonder that Gerald Ackerman chose to include this piece in the landmark publication American Orientalist. Finally, we see Cooper completely resolved in this Mideastern masterpiece. Garden is lush, structures fabulous, figures at ease, fountain refreshing. An artist employs his skills in a radiant view of a captivating, far-off world. In this exhibition of Cooper's works on paper, it is evident that he is one of America's finest Impressionists. Paper Sketches by Colin Campbell Cooper is on view through January 3rd.